Hey guys, welcome back to your channel. It's Maverick here with another episode of Monster Girl Doctor. So, uh, continuing on where we left off last episode, uh, even though we went to visit a village of harpies, the episode ended focusing on centaurs instead, and some rather specific fetishes at that. Although, considering the subject matter of this series and how uh, it's been going so far, I guess that was bound to crop up sooner or later. But in any case, in this episode, I do believe we are going to be instead looking at the story of the Harpy, which Glenn and um, and Safi managed to save two episodes past, uh, how she can't fly, and how, you know, I'm assuming that Glenn will allow her to fly again, since we can clearly see her flying from the opening, right? So let's just get right into the story. All right, let's begin in three, two, one, play. How long did you guys stay here? Yeah, I mean, if it's a sprain, if it's a minor sprain, at least three to five days. But I guess centaurs have a different biology, right? Ew, look at that weird animation. Holy crap. Did you guys see that? <laughs> yeah. Low budget anime. Well, that is a lot of fetish. Uh, I mean, we can clearly see her flying in the opening, so that's kind of a spoiler, I guess. Hmm. I wonder if this series is actually going to do anything special in regards to the music. Eh. Well, considering it is a budget anime, I guess I can't really expect too much. You know, sometimes with animes, uh, especially in the, in series like this, even if the original song for the opening or ending wasn't sang by the voice actresses originally, they might do a special version at the very end. Or I guess they could always include it as a part of a special for the Blu-ray set or something like that. That's not a bad song, this one. What? That moves? With your hands? Hmm. 
Good question. Eh. Well, I guess this is the more medieval age kind of setting. So, I give it a pass. Holy crap. Oh, that's actually quite impressive if he's able to actually get the temperature. Is it maybe mental? I have to say though, being a being a good doctor, a large part of it is being able to connect with your patients. It's got to be doubly hard for you know, for Glenn, who's a human, right? Test me. Yeah. So she uses a kicking style? <laughs> okay, let's see how the action of this anime goes.
There we go. The classic, you know, high class girl laugh. I think letting her take some um, energy stick might be better than <laughs> Safi actually fighting her. Okay, sort of like an outlier. So yeah, it is a mental problem in the end. And they couldn't see this while they were sweeping up all the feathers back then. It's like all over the place. I mean, if she's just molting. <laughs> What's with that on her? Oh. <laughs> I like how there's a little umbrella there as well. I guess, you know, Lamias are snakes, so they're cold-blooded.
what? So what the heck is happening to her? She's just molting. Is it a bigger molt than usual? Oh, is it... So it's really purely mental, eh? Okay, let me guess. So there's going to be like some kind of a situation happening. Somebody's going to get into danger and then they're going to require Illy to fly to save them. Or something like that. Shady Caesar. Hmm. The Lamias do make great assassins if you think about it in this kind of way. What? What? Oh, hey, it's Kafuli. Kef That's got to be a great multitasker, eh? <laughs> so what is the answer? I honestly can't figure this out. Either. There's... There's a difference? Phoenix split? Okay, I guess I don't need to... <laughs> look too deep into, you know, like the parallels between birds in real life. So what does that mean then? That one of her parents... One of her parents is a phoenix? Or at least one of her ancestors? How does that help into her figuring out what she wants though? I don't... <laughs> you look... kinda ridiculous, Illy. <laughs> I'm sorry to say that, but...
Well, I guess that is kind of an embarrassing thing if you think about it. Well, physically, anyways. Mentally? Not so much. I think there's... Okay, so she has a much higher body temperature than normal. True Phoenix? Eh! Well. Oh well. See you guys after this. Okay, that was a tame little episode. Um, let's talk a little bit about Illy first, though, uh, in terms of her design, because uh, even though they keep on using the the westernized Phoenix uh, within the episode here, right? They they translated as Phoenix, and the pronunciation they also um, translated as they're basically referring to the actual Phoenix of Western culture, right? Both in the way that they pronounce it and the way that you know they're they're saying it, how it it reborns and and all so on and so forth. However, the actual design of Illy actually uh, compares more with the Chinese version of the Phoenix, which is not really related to the Western Phoenix in any way. Um, so in Chinese, it's it's called the Feng Huang, uh, which is again kind of sort of the same thing. Uh, in J in Japanese, it's actually there's a specific terminology for it called the Ho. -Oh. Uh, which some of you might know from Pokemon actually. There's a legendary Pokemon named Ho as well, which is based on the, the Feng Huang, which um, would be, I guess, if you say it in English, the Chinese Phoenix. So um, I think that's where the design concept comes from, and that's why she has like these rainbow colors, uh, feathers in, in her, uh, compared to like the Western Phoenix, where it should be mostly just red, right? Uh, like a fire or something like that. So, just a little bit of trivia there, and I have no idea why they actually decided to use the word Phoenix instead of using Ho-Oh, which could be translated into Phoenix, but would be a little bit less confusing. Uh, I guess they just wanted to, you know, do, make it entirely westernized, since Glenn and, and all that, these are more westernized concepts, right? These western, uh, sorry, these monster girls, which are based on western mythological creatures. Um, so yeah, so that's that. As for the episode itself, I gotta be honest, this one was a little bit more tame, um, not really too interesting to me, uh, to be honest, uh, in terms of the storyline and also because of Illy's character as well. I, I, I don't really have much patience to deal with these kinds of um, childish characters, if you will, who, uh, um, you know, as, as, and not to mention, I feel like the entire the entire um, setting of the story for this episode was a little bit weird, right? You go into all of this and trying to to say, oh yeah, this is a sort of like a teenage girl or, or a child or a child going through uh, her puberty phase, right? Being unsure of herself and not sure of her role in the world or something like that. But the thing is, they just never really went deep enough. They didn't really make Illy out to be a, a likable character at all beyond just her looks, I guess you could say. And then also. Um, you know, they never really resolved that in the end. So what if she if she has uh, turned into an adult by her physical standards, right? Like, for instance, if, if you are in real life, a teenage girl turning, um, you know, turning 18, like, um, for for most countries, I, I think 18 is like the adult age. Some also have like an age 20 or something like that, but, you know, that's kind of irrelevant. 
So, so what if that happens? If you're still unsure of yourself, you're unsure what to do with your life, you're unsure of your future, that's still there. You're not going to change anything just because you became of age, right? And so that's the same here as well. So what? So she got, she turned into a, a physical adult here. Did that change anything in regards to her mental issues or, or her, um, her lack of confidence in herself or whatnot? I mean, at least I, I wish they would have at least touch a little bit on, on that part of the story, right? Um, I mean, gaining self-confidence just because you suddenly know that you have this sort of heritage and whatnot. So, so what, right? Like, what's that actually going to mean for her in the future, right? Uh, does that mean she knows where she wants to stay? She knows what she wants to do? Um, I don't know. I just didn't really, I just really don't feel the, um, how the story was written in this particular episode. No, I guess uh, the problem for that would be stemming all the way back to the light novel source material as well. But then um, that's just my two cents on this situation. So I'm, I'm okay. If, if you really want to make a character with such as this, fine. Uh, you got to at least show us their growth, right? And not just like have one, one episode dedicated to this and then you know just leave it at that that doesn't really help anything that doesn't really help me like the character more and most of it doesn't really solve the character's problems at all so yeah anyways that's that was like my quick review of this particular episode not really much else to say i guess uh the the little bit of fan service this one i i mean the part where glenn was actually measuring her body temperature with his hands well you go, go you, go you, Glenn. I guess there's a reason why he's a genius doctor, right? Okay, anyways, that's it for this episode. Um, and I will see you guys next week as well. What did you guys think about this character? Let me know. Am I being a little bit too harsh? Maybe on a not really serious series, but still. I mean, since I'm watching it anyways, you guys know my style. I gotta point out stuff that um, I want to call out. So, in any case, I'll see you guys next time as well. Bye-bye.